Yeah, hey, happy Sunday, everyone. Come on, if you're happy to be in your Simbalai mode, come on, give him a clap of praise. Hallelujah, God is great. Anyway, if you have somebody beside you, ingnay mong katapat, be excited. God has a word for you today. Praise the Lord. Anyway, before we begin, let us pray. Hallelujah, God. Lord, we just welcome your presence, God. Lord, we are so excited to encounter you through your word. Father, release your presence and your power wherever we are, God, Lord. Sa mga bahay namin, boarding houses, God, Lord, wherever we are, salamat for the open heavens, God. Thank you, Lord, for what you're gonna do today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. First of all, I'd like to thank God and our pastors for the privilege to preach and share the message to us today. You know, a lot of things have happened in the past two years. Tama ba? Sobrang daming nangyari, you know? Maraming pwede dati na hindi na pwede ngayon. And, and the truth is, for many of us, we've tried our best para to cope up, no? Marami tayong ginawa. Maraming na-discover nila na marunong pala sila magluto. Amen? Some discovered that they actually love riding bikes. Some people discover that, you know, since I cannot travel, why don't I climb mountains, right? Tama ba? No, so we've discovered so many things in the past two years. And I believe today, God wants to remind us because there's so many things that are new to our lives. Maraming bago, maraming nadagdag. If we are not careful, if we are not careful in accommodating all these things, our fire for God, our love for God can actually be displaced. And so today we are going to talk about zeal for the Lord. Come on, everybody say zeal for the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you know, the, the objective of this message is for us to search our hearts. Are we still burning hot for God? Are we still on fire for the Lord? So what does zeal mean? Zeal means great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause. Are we still, you know, energized? Are we still excited when it comes to life group, whether it be physical or online? Are you still excited to watch our, you know, our Sunday services? You know, online, are you still excited? The Word of God says in Romans 12, 11, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. You know, when Apostle Paul said that, you know, he meant that in every season of your life, whether in the good times, in the bad times, whether you are in a pandemic or not, keep your spiritual fervor, keep your zeal. And you know what, friends, as I preach to you today, Ramdam ko ang bigat ng ating niraranasan. You know, I lost a loved one. Amen. An immediate family during this pandemic. My entire family, you know, we got quarantined. You know, we lost a business of 11 years and I had to let go of more than 10 of our staff. You know, when I preach to you this, alam ko, there are trials left and right. But the word of God exhorts us. Never be lacking in zeal. Amen? Come on. If you believe God is about to do something today, why don't you give Him a clap of praise? Yay! Hallelujah! You know, another, another meaning of zeal, aside from great energy, is, is the passion of the Father's heart imparted to us. You know, I love this meaning in one of the commentaries. You know, it means that you understand what pleases the Father. You understand what makes God happy. Amen? And when you understand that, you pursue it with all your energy, with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You know, our key verse for today is in John 2, 13 to 17. And you know, I, I, I love this story and every time I read this, I understand how on fire, how caught up, Jesus is when it comes to the Father's heart. Let me read. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at the table exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords. 
Guys, I've read this story many times. I cannot imagine, you know, a very compassionate God. You know, a God who heals, a God who cares, a God who will leave the 99 and look for the one. Magbuat siya latigo. And he would like whip people out. And he was so mad, you know, he was he was so driven. And he scattered the coins, gitumba niya ang mga lamesa, the money changers, overturned the tables. To those who sold doves, he said, listen to this, sumigaw pa siya with exclamation point, get this out of here, stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. You know, Jesus understood the heart of the Father. So when Jesus entered the table and he saw what was happening, what was supposed to be for God, what was supposed to be, you know, you know, for the ministry to, to please, to advance the kingdom, you know, they were already doing business and other stuff and it moved him. Alamo, when you are filled with zeal and fire and passion for God, sometimes you cannot help. You know, you cannot help despite all the opposition. You would push to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. Kamusta ba ang mga zeal natin? You know, people of God, are we still on fire? After two years of being locked down, you know, probably some of you, you lost your jobs, you lost your businesses, you lost a loved one. How is your fire for God? Amen? Is it, you know, still burning hot? Or is it, you know, dying down? What are the effects of losing your zeal for God? The first one is, unnecessary things now begin to fill your life. You know, in the past two years, I know, you know, we, we tried to do things to cope up. Normal yun. You know, we discovered skills and talents. Wow, some people began online selling. Amen. Lumabas na yung mga pagkaplantito, plantita. And I am guilty of that. Amen. You know, you discovered new skills. Hindi ka makalabas, hindi ka makatravel. So why not buy plants? You know, and some people, you started watching, Uy, one Korean novela. The next thing you know, you've already watched 10. Amen. Series or what? You know what? So... Guys, if we are not careful, all these things can actually push back your spiritual life. New hobbies, hobbies taking much time and displaces the spiritual things. Friends, books, musics, gadgets, baka may iba sa atin na humaling na. Unnecessary things now begin to fill your life. 1 Corinthians 10.23 Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. The second one, distracted by lesser purposes instead of being fixed on God. You know, probably for some of you, because sometimes when there's major shakings, it drives you. It drives you not, yung para ganing, to really survive, to really make it. Right? So you have your goals, you know? Ipun goals. You know, I will do this. I will do that. You know, travel goals. And I've seen people, you know, uh, you know, have these goals during the pandemic. If di kumakagawas, I'll travel all over Davao City, all over Davao region, and I'll, 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 I'll go to these places. You know, family bonding goals, fitness goals, right? Probably for some of you, since you cannot go out, you've started working out. Social media goals. Like what I said, all of these things are good. You know, all of these things are okay. But if you are not careful, this can actually, you know, displace your fire for God. Amen. The Word of God says, Matthew 6.33, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. It is the desire of God to bless you with such things. But dapat number one pa rin siya sa buhay natin. No matter what. Amen? You know what does distracted mean? To be overly occupied about a thing, to be drawn away. You know, batu-batu sa langit, ang tamaan, wag magalit. I've seen people before very active in church and when you invite them during Sundays, wala na. You know, they're somewhere riding their bikes, riding their motorcycles, going to these wonderful destinations na padaplin na ang ginoo. Next one is become focused on materialism. The constant need to acquire new things. 
Alam mo, sometimes when you go through difficult seasons of life, we have the tendency yung escapist mentality. Escapist mentality. You want to forget your problems. You want to satisfy, you know, your, your, the emptiness inside. So what do you do? You go shopping, right? Lumakas ang mga online shopping. Ima? Shopping, right? Naging sikat. You know, it's good. We buy stuff from those, you know, businesses as well. But if you are not careful, this can actually, you know, displace your love for God. You try to feel the lack of zeal or emptiness with stuff. Stuff cannot fill, you know, the void inside your heart. Material things cannot fill the void inside your heart. Next one. You begin to allow disappointments, unhealed hurts, bitterness to stay in your life. You no longer consider them as weights. Probably, you know, one of, a si- one of the signs if you already lose your fire and zeal for God, minsan wala ka ng control sa emotions mo. Ay okay lang to. Sobrang dami, na- dami ko nang nararanasan na experience. And then ganituhin pa niya ako. It's my right to get mad. Right? You begin to, you know, you begin to be emotional. Wala ka ng control. Emotionally lack control. Proverbs 25, 28. Like a city whose walls are broken, true is a person who lacks self-control. One sign that you are already losing your zeal for God is that the Spirit is no longer controlling your life. You are already being led by your emotions. Sa putunak ka, sa una dilim ang kaana. Amen? Kanagaling dali na ka mangluod, maibog, dili man ka na sa una. It's probably a sign of lack of zeal. And lastly, slip back to compromises. Then you begin, you know, to slip back, to go back to your old ways. Amen? Your darling sins begin to knock on your door. You know, your favorite sins become attractive again. Nilayuan mo na yan. Guys, if you are here today, and after the two years of, you know, all these things that have happened to us, if you are like paraganing, yung mga kasalanan nilalayuan mo na, some suddenly becomes attractive again. And you keep, you fall and you fall and you fall into the trap, you know, to the temptations, then probably, you know, there's a lack of zeal already. Praise God. First John 2.15-17, the Word of God says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Very strong. Do not love the world. We are bombarded by the world, by so much, you know, by so much stuff. Kung wala kang ganito. You know, your eyes are always, you know, when you look at social media, kung wala kang ganito, if, you're, if you don't look like this, if you haven't gone to this, if you don't have this, kulang. And you begin to pursue those things. If the fire is already dwindling and mahina na ang apoy, you can fall into the trap of loving the world. Loving the world. And the Word of God says, If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. John 14, 26. The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. You know, when you have the fire of God, the Holy Spirit will remind you. Oops, sobra na yan. Oops, you know what? Ilang beses ka na naka-absent sa life group mo. Oops, medyo, you know, trim down mo na yung pag-watch mo ng social media or ng mga telenovela. You know what? But when the fire is already gone, you lose the control. You no longer hear. You no longer, you know, feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So what are the effects of keeping your zeal for God? Ano ang effects? What are the good things that can happen if you have the zeal for the Lord. Number one, zeal for the Lord enables you to professionally organize your life. You know, when Jesus entered the temple, He found them doing business, but not the Father's business. You know what, friends? If God knocks into your heart, if God searches your life, what will He find? 
You know, will he find, you know, you doing the father's business? O baka na-replace na yun? Life group leader dati, ngayon. You know, I don't know what keeps you busy. You know, I understand merong mga limitations. I understand there are some things that we cannot do anymore. But alam mo, if you really want it, there are, you know, there are, merong mga pwedeng gawin. You can go online. You know, there are so many things that you can do to continue the work that God has assigned in you. So that's a question that we need to ask ourselves. If God searches our lives, will He still find us faithful in doing the work that He has entrusted to us? You know, just a background, why it's so sad, why Jesus got really mad. You know, the place inside the temple where they were holding the business, you know, where asa sila na maligyag mga cattle, mga doves, that was supposed to be the area where the Gentiles will worship the Lord. That place was intended for the people who do not know God to worship Him. Instead of advancing the kingdom and bringing people into the temple, they were busy doing business. That's good. It's okay. Negosyante put me. Labi na karon pandemic. We like work double time, left and right. But if you know what is what pleases the heart of God, ipaglalaban mo yan. Amen. Amen. Come on. If you know God is speaking to you today, why don't you give Him a clap of praise? Hallelujah. You you professionally organize your life, and I, I love this about God. Alam mo, when we came to God, mess up man ang ato mga kinabuhi. Our lives were in shambles, but God helped us fix our lives. Amen. So that's an effect. If you have passion and fire for God, you begin to, you know, God will begin to remind you how to organize your life. Song of Solomon 2.15 Catch for us the little foxes, for they ruin the vineyard. Alam mo, look at that verse. Sometimes, ay, konting compromise lang to. I know, it's okay. It's okay, isang ano lang ito. I'll just do this. I'll, isang beses lang naman ako mag-absent sa life group. And the next thing you know, second time, third time, and it begins to become easy for you to say, okay lang, pass muna ako. Sabi doon, catch the little foxes. These little foxes, these little compromises, eventually if they gather, they will destroy your fruitfulness in the Lord. Amen? They will ruin your vineyard. Instead of being fruitful, wala na. Amen? Sometimes it's not the big things that destroy us. It's the little compromises. Next is your zeal for the Lord creates space for what ultimately matters. Guys, do you remember the time? Hindi kasanay magdivo. You know, very busy person, but because you have this fire for God, you would discipline yourself to wake up early. You would discipline yourself to pray. You know, fire for God, amen, creates a space. You know, creates a space. Tagaan, yun yung panahon. You cannot help it. Because you know it pleases God. You give time, you give energy, you give resources. You know, one of the quotes that I really love, and up to this day, I, I really like, says, to fall in love with God is the greatest romance. Is it still your greatest romance? Or are there other loves that you are trying to pursue? And then si God na padapli na. To seek Him is the greatest adventure. Wow! Do you still say, Lord, seeking you when I am with you, when I know you, when you reveal yourself to me, it is the greatest adventure. Or are there other adventures na nakapadapli na sa ginoo? You know, it's good. It's good to go to places. It's good to climb mountains. It's good to, you know, to learn to how to collect plants, to cook, etc. But I pray that above all these things, you know, God, the pursuit of God, is still the greatest thing in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. And to find Him is the greatest human achievement. No, alam mo, sa two years na to, marami tayong na-achieve. Tama ba? Some of us lost weight. Some of us 
discovered new skills and they're doing good in business. Some of us, you know, we have com conquered impossible things na akala natin di natin kayang gawin. Kaya mo pala mag-mountain climbing. Kaya mo pala mag-free mag, you know, mag diving. Kaya mo pala mag-bike ng hang Davao hanggang Cagayan de Oro. I don't know. But I pray that, you know, finding Him is still our greatest achievement. Amen? Glory to God. Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me, and when you seek me with all of your heart. Alam mo, mahihirapan talaga tayo makita si Lord if it's no longer all of our heart. Amen? It's a reminder to us. If we really want God, if we want the fire back, it has to be all of our hearts. Next one, zeal for the Lord brings divine intervention to remove all the debris that displaces God's purpose. Hebrews 12.1, the word of God says, Let us throw everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. 2 Corinthians 2.14, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Alamo, when, when you are on fire for God, the Spirit of God within you will help you. Amen? Overcome mga struggles mo. Hindi ka basta-basta matarog. Hindi ka basta-basta mag-give in to temptation. That's the Word of God. He will lead you to triumph. Kakayanin mong i-throw off ang mga kasalanan na so sa tingin mo sobrang bigat, pabigat sa buhay mo. Amen? If you are here today and, and you feel in your heart Parang sobrang bigat na ng pinapasan mo. You know? Sin sa kaliwa, unforgiveness sa kanan, amen, dishonesty dito, etc., etc. Then that's a sign of losing your zeal for God. But when you have the zeal or the fire for the Lord, it helps you overcome those things. The next one, zeal for the Lord brings clarity and helping us priorities, prioritize kingdom values. Alam mo, sa mundo natin, we've heard this many times, maraming mali na ginawa ng tama. Hindi mukhang tama. Ginawa na talagang tama. Alam mong mali, pero ginawang tama. You know what? But when you have the fire for God, you still prioritize the values that are important in the kingdom of God. You know, Colossians 3, 2 to 3 and 5, set your minds on things above. Sabi dito, put to death therefore whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality. Young people, kahit na lahat ng kabataan, you are there doing, you know, these immoral things. And I say this to you, you know, one time I was looking at some gadgets, you know, uh, applications. I saw this uh, TikTok, right? TikTok. And you know, some of the dances that the young people do in TikTok, wa yod malipay ang ginoo. Baski pang 1 million ang likes ni Mudira. Wag yun, malipay ang ginuwa na. Amen? You know, when you have the fire for God, you know, you, it doesn't matter to you. You know that's of the world. You know it displeases God. Sabi dito, put to death sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed. Set your minds on things above. Even if everyone is doing it, even if everyone says it's acceptable, you still pursue the kingdom values. The Word of God says, 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, Flee from the evil desires of your youth. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord. Amen? Pursue righteousness. Uso pa ba yan, pastor? You know, everybody is doing it. Amen. If I don't wear this very sexy dress, I may look like a, a nanay na. Amen. Kung hindi ako makatry nito, baka, you know, they will think na, ano, makaluma ako. They will not accept me. The Word of God says, flee from all these desires. Pursue righteousness. Pursue faith. When everybody is, you know, busy, you know, doing, memorizing their TikTok dance, dances, that's okay, right? But, you know, ikaw, dapat tayo, busy rin tayo, memorize ng Bible, devotional natin, parte na yan ng sistema natin, you know, prayer. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace 
along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Next is zeal for the Lord propels us in kingdom purposes. You know, you don't just accommodate, you don't just arrange, it actually puts action to our faith. Amen? Kahit na pandemic, you can be, you know, fruitful. Amen? You know, I like what Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9.16. Sabi niya, Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. You know, do you still feel that way? Amen? You know what the meaning of woe is? You get distressed. You get sad. It breaks your heart. Do you still get sad? Kung example, hindi kayo naka-life group dahil mahina ang internet connection. Does it, does it break your heart when you invite someone and nobody responded? Or parang nasanay ka na, it's okay. You know what? Okay lang. Ganito talaga. Amen? But the Word of God says, sabi ni Paul, Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Philippians 3.8, I consider everything lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. You know, when you have the fire for God, there are times you would have to let go of some things. Masarap pang matulog, but you know, God wants to spend time with you. You don't, you, you, pagod ka, but you know, you have, you have a life group, you have to prepare, you have to set up your internet and do online life group. But sabi dito, I consider everything lost. Amen? All of this, when I compare to the greatness of God, is a loss. Next is, zeal for the Lord is extremely important for the end time church. Ako, guys, this is not the time to lose your fire and zeal for God. This is not the time. Dili ni ang panahon magluya-luya. Naanay COVID, naanay mga etc. Mga, you know, the things that are happening all over the world. And nawala pa ka sa ginoo. This is not the time. Revelations 21, 2. The word of God says, Coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Alam mo, God is coming back for a church that is beautifully prepared. Sa simbahan na nag-andam good. Amen. You know, ang balikan na simbahan sa ginoo ka nang naglong yun sa yaha. Na despite of the pandemic, despite of all these things, you know, you kept yourself faithful. God, I want you to come back. Come, Lord Jesus. Save us from this COVID, God. I love you. I will pray. I will read your word. Mauna ang balikan sa ginoo. Beautifully prepared as a bride. You know, when you read the book of Revelations, the Chapter 2 pa lang, sabi na ni Lord, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Right? You know, God is after your love, your zeal, your fire. Amen? Revelations 3.1 I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive. In a very social media world, marami sa atin, if I look good in social media, I'm okay. If I post a, a Bible verse, I'm a Christian. Amen? If I heart or I share this, then you know what? I'm a follower of Jesus. But the Word of God says, I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Very strong. But you know what? God is looking at the fire. God is looking at your zeal. God is looking for your love for Him. Mauna ginapangita sa gino in the end time church. That's why it's extremely important. Zeal for the Lord releases you to the finishing anointing. Amen. Mao ni. I know this season has not been easy. When 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 our family got hit of COVID, we got we were all placed into the quarantine. You know, mahirap. Physically, mentally, emotionally, it's telling you, wag na, kapuy na. But you know, the spirit inside you, you know, I need to pray. I need to call on the Lord. You know, the, the verse that keeps on coming back into my mind, where else will I go? Asa paman kumuad to Lord, you have the words of life. Amen. I cannot drown myself in Korean novella. I cannot drown myself in these plants. These are all good. But you know, where else will I go? 
it releases you to the finishing anointing. Amen? You know, baski pang left and right ang, ang pagsulay, baski gakamang ka na, when you have the, the fire for God, you will not surrender. Acts 20:24. 20, However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying the good news of God's grace. People of God, alam mo, if there's something that God really wants to download to us today, let us search our hearts. Do we still have the fire for Him? Kasi baka yung mga compromises mo, baka yung mga disarrangements sa buhay mo, it's a sign, it's a symptom of losing, having losing your fire. Nawala na ang fire ni mo. Lisod na kayo yung mata sa buntag to pray. Lisod na, bugat na kayo ang Bible. Amen, bungi-bungi na ang imong devotion. Of course, we are not legalistic. But it, it becomes a, a habit, a lifestyle, then that's a sign that you have already lost your fire. So practical things. Uh, I want to say this. Run your race and burn for Him. Amen? If you have somebody beside you, tell Him, run your race. Tanawa sa mata. Run your race and burn for Him. Amen? In the midst of everything, in the midst of this pandemic, we don't know when this is going to end. Run your race. Burn for Him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now how to keep the zeal? Number one, zeal has its source in our intimacy with God. It cannot be manufactured. It must be stewarded. Amen? You know, where do you get your zeal? Spending time with God. Easier, easier said than done. You know, Proverbs 4.23, Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. When you lose your fire in your heart, when you lose that zeal in your heart, when you lose that love in your heart, everything will follow good. But when you regain that fire in your heart, when you regain that zeal in your heart, amen, I tell you, you will be fruitful. I tell you, you will get your life group back. I tell you, your prayer life will improve. Guard your heart for everything flows from it. Matthew 12, 20, a bruised reed he will not break. A smoldering wick he will not snuff out. Alamo, the good news is if you are here today and you're listening to this, you have been so uh, para ganing nakulatado ka masyado. Left and right on trials. You feel like a bruised reed. Damaged na ako. So many things has happened to my life. I lost a lot of people. I lost this and that. Sabi dito, smoldering wick. You know what a smoldering wick is? It's like a log. Na, you know, dati may apoy. You no longer see the fire. It's like the smoke. Little, little, super little fire that it's unnoticeable anymore. Baka nandito ka ngayon and you're like a smoldering wick. You're about, the fire is about to die down. You know, the good news is God is ready to fan the flame again. If you come back to Him, if you go back to Him, you know, God the Holy Spirit is the ultimate fire starter in our lives. Do you remember the first time you encountered Him? Do you remember the first time you heard Him speak to you? He is the ultimate fire starter. Even in the midst of trials, murakag si Daniel na palibutan o gliyon. When you hear God's voice, I tell you, you know, all those lions, amen? You know, they will not matter. Amen? What is important? Lord, nakaginuuban ta karon. You know, I share this to you because na-experience na mo ni. When we went through that crisis in our life, it was not easy. But God was faithful. He was there in the fire with us. You know, practical things to do. Practical na po ito. Number one, Feed your zeal or your fire with the Word of God. Feed your zeal. You know, you have to put, you know, firewood and it's the Word of God. Matthew 4.4 4, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. We do this not dutifully, but hungrily. Come on, remind yourself, not dutifully, 
Yun, doon nagsisimula ang lack of fire when you do it dutifully. Of course, there are times na, gawin na mangyayari yan. But remind yourself, it has to be hungrily. I must come. I must do this because I want to hear His voice through the Bible, through the Scriptures. Number two, add fire to the furnace with prayer. Amen. Ako, I like what Oswald Chambers said. Prayer is the vital breath of the Christian, not the thing that makes him alive, but the evidence that he is alive. Alam mo, yung prayer life mo is the evidence that you are spiritually alive. You know, you, you, you cannot help. Kung totoo talaga yan, you cannot help but call on to God. You cannot help but communicate to God. Amen? Prayer. Number three, worship the Lord with extravagance. Praise God. Alam mo, you know this, one of the things that I, I really want to honor our pastors they taught us to worship God with just going all out. Amen? Even if we cannot gather the way we used to, worship Him in your room. Sing a song to Him. Ako, I tell you this, guys. When I start, play, glory to God, glory to God. When I start playing my guitar in my room, maputulan pa rin ako ng string. <laughs> because when, you know, the Spirit is there, I cannot help but just go all the way. Amen? You don't lessen your worship because you are alone. You don't lessen your worship because nobody is watching you. Amen? We do that because we have an audience of one. Only one matters when we worship. And that is the Lord. According to one pastor, if our worship isn't visible, comprehensive, and extravagant, then the gospel we heard must have been tiny, empty, and cheap. And I tell you, the word of God, the gospel, the God that we worship is not tiny. The, his word is not empty. And what he did is not cheap. So we worship him with extravagance. Amen? In the midst of this pandemic, alam mo, when we worship in our houses, I tell you, sampalyan sa enemy that he cannot silence the people of God. Number four, allow the Holy Spirit to move. Amen? He is our counselor, our companion. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8 You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So don't quench the Holy Spirit. Ayaw pugni ang Holy Spirit. Amen? Even in your room, when you encounter Him, you know, one encounter with Him can turn your situation around. It can turn your situation around. Kung uga ka na kaayo, you know, one encounter with Him. You will receive power. You want the fire again? You want that adventure? You want that strong desire to hear Him speak through the Word? You want ka na ganing when you pray? It's like you cannot stop. You need to encounter the presence of God again. Number five, do a house cleaning of your heart. Like what I said kanina, guard your heart because everything flows from it. Baka after, you know, the, 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 the two years that we have been experiencing the pandemic, baka, you know, you begin to accommodate unforgiveness, anger, all those emotional baggages. You have to clean your heart. You have to do a house cleaning. You have to settle that. I'm telling you right now, you want the fire of God? You have to settle the things that are in your heart that is displeasing to the Lord. Number six, bring your fire closer to other fires. Amen? Nobody is called, the Christian life is never intended to be in seclusion. God called us to be in a community. Amen? When you go camping, Diba? When you wake up in the morning, there are fire, you know, mga logs na yung you used before as a, you know, as a fireplace. You want to make another fire? You gather those fire. Those that are still like, there's still smoke, little fire. You gather this. And I tell you, mas mabilis mag-make ng bagong apoy. You want your fire back again? Reconnect to the other people who are on fire for God. Next is, start making your fire useful. Serve Him again. If you're good in IT, I tell you, useful ang skill mo ngayon. 
If you're good in the computer, useful yan sa mga online meetings ninyo. Volunteer sa leader mo. If you know your leader is not that good, ako aminado, I'm not good. You know, sa computer. Then somebody says, you know, Pastor Carl, can I help? Can I do the host, the Zoom, or etc.? You know, volunteer. The Word of God says, if you can be trusted with a little, God will entrust you with much. Even if you have this little fire, when you begin to say yes again to God, when you begin to say, I want to volunteer, God will add to that fire. Number eight, second to the last na po ito, find a personal firebrand. Amen? What's a firebrand? A firebrand is a person passionate about a particular cause, inciting change and radical action. You know, look for people who are on fire for God. And for many of us, you have your leader. Kahit na hindi mo yan, nire-reply yan. Kahit na dapat in, in his mind, in his heart, ma-offend na dapat siya, nilibre ka niya, sinundo ka niya, and then ngayon ayaw mo na siyang kamustahin, ayaw mo nang magpakita. But tuloy-tuloy pa rin siya. That person is on fire. You know, look for a, find a personal firebrand. Look for a person who is on fire. And we have our pastors. We have our leaders. You have your leader. Get close, get as close as possible to those who are burning for God and you will be ignited. Get as close as possible. Elisha followed Elijah. Sabi ni Elisha, I'm gonna follow you. And when I follow you up to the very end, I'll receive double anointing. I'll receive double fire. Timothy followed Paul. The disciples followed Jesus. You have to have someone you know, na sinusundan mo, those that are on fire for God. And lastly, spread the fire. Amen? You want the fire to increase? Spread the fire. You know, John Wesley said, if you light yourself on fire, that men, then men will come for miles to watch you burn. Uh, diba? Have you tried that sharing your testimony? After sharing your testimony, suddenly you begin more on fire for God? You know, when you begin to help out in your life group, suddenly you notice, wow, I feel on fire. Amen? There's a different kind of fire than just attending church. That's the effect when you spread the fire, when you help out in the kingdom's cause. Amen. Amen. So that's our word for today. You know, I believe God really wants to set us back on fire, to bring the zeal back. Because losing our zeal... Alamo is dangerous. It's dangerous. But getting back our zeal, amen, will really help us to be victorious during this time. Praise God. Did we learn something today? Amen. Can I request everybody to please stand up? You know, wherever you are, you may be in your room, your boarding house, kahit ikaw lang isa, let's stand up. And can you close your eyes and lift up your hand? And right now, begin to assess yourself. Am I still on fire for God? Do I still get excited in the things of God? Holy Spirit, I pray that you would begin to search our hearts today. Father, search our hearts today. Am I still thirsty? Am I still thirsty? Am I still hungry for the Word of God? You know, even if online na, am I still excited? Come on, search your heart right now. Holy Spirit, I pray for deep conviction right now. And come on, if you know in your heart that you've lost your fire and you've tolerated it, the place to begin is to humble yourself. Ask for forgiveness. Lord, pasaylo ako ginoo. God, I've tolerated, God, this lack of fire in my life. Lord, I made the pandemic the reason for losing the fire. God, I made my circumstance the reason for losing the fire. I am sorry, God. And right now, ask the Lord, Lord, set me on fire again. Bring back the zeal. Bring back the intimacy, God. God, open my eyes, God, Lord. Reveal to me once again, God, your plans and purposes. Salamat kayo gino. Father, I pray right now. Your word says, if there's like a smoldering wick, you are about to lose your fire. I pray right now, God, that you would begin to set them ablaze. 
in the name of Jesus. Release that fire in them right now, God. Father, 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 set us ablaze like Jesus when He went to the temple, God. Wag yun siya nakapugong. Amen. He saw that you were not pleased with what was happening. Father, I bless your people today. Thank you, Lord, for your word. May your church, may your bride be filled with zeal for you. May the zeal of the Lord consume us today. We love you, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen.